Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you're welcome once again to module two of our training on how to design shoe patterns, particularly for an Oxford shoe. So this is just um, a summary of some of the things we did in module one. So we noted that 20% of your standard last length is your counterpoint. So you mark out your counterpoint and you draw a line from that counterpoint to the subdivision of the vamp line to give you the quarter line. You divide your quarter line into two, mark out the half point on the quarter line and then subdivide the half of the quarter line. Then draw a right angle from that subdivision point to your main axis to give you the pin step height. We also mentioned that if you add 1 cm to your counterpoint, that will give you the heel height. Then if you draw a line from your heel height to the place where your quarter line starts, and then connect that line to on a curve to your instep height will give you the opening of the shoe just like this <laughs> so with just those three things we've gotten the opening of our shoe which is which starts from the instep height to, to the heel height having gotten that opening of the shoe we just draw in the tongue and now um, it's time for us to draw the cap toe this is a cap toe oxford the cap toe typically starts around um, three inches so we measure three inches from the tip draw a right angle and then just draw in that cap toe like so see that simply that's your cap toe now you know we found the vamp point which is the point where the vamp line crosses the center line any point any point slightly above that vamp point you can start drawing your quarters from but your quarters can never come below the vamp point so you see from here i took about one inches above the vamp point to start my quarters and then draw in the curve like so see that so if you notice it starts about one inch above one inch or just um, a few centimeters above the vamp point so let's trace out all the parts that we've drawn right now we've drawn the cap toe we've drawn the opening of the shoe we've drawn the vamp itself and then we've drawn the quarter so that's basically what a cap toe oxford will look like on this mask so we trace out once again our feather edge uh, on both sides because we are going to be utilizing both sides if you use the um, last tipping method the first time you buy your last it will actually be instructive to tape the whole side of the last so that you can have both the medial and the lateral side of the last with which you can generate your main form once you generate that medial side next each time you are designing um, a shoe you don't need to generate that um, um, inside or medial side of the last so right now we've cut out the lateral side of the design from the last and cut it around the feather edge so that's our um, lateral side that contains our shoe design next thing we are going to do is we are going to also cut out the medial side I just told you that if it's the first time you are designing on a particular last, you should take both sides of the last so that you can have this medial side to work with. It is from this medial, the average of this medial side and the lateral side that you will use in generating your main form. But once you have generated the medial side, you don't need to generate it again because all of your designs will typically be done on the lateral side. So right now we trace out the medial side on a plain piece of cardboard trace it out then we also mark the point where we have our 
vamp point and our vamp line so this is our vamp line on this medial side so you trace that to the exact point where it matches on your cardboard so this is our medial side the inside part of the shoe then we will match the tip of the lateral side to the heel height on the medial side that we have um, taped out so the tip goes to the tip the heel height goes to the heel height and then we would also trace out the lateral side onto the same plain cardboard sheet that we have and then we trace out our design as we have it on the lateral side um, i'm actually printing deeply so that it will show on the plain cardboard or if you have a rotary wheel like i do you could actually use your rotary wheel to trace out the design elements on your from your lateral side remember what i said the tip the point that you are matching is the tip and the heel height so we trace out the design lines as you see me doing on the lateral side and then we represent it on the plain cardboard that we have so that's the vamp and the quarter and that's the opening of the shoe so what you need to do is if you will notice that the lateral side will at some point be above the medial side and then at some point be under it you just find the middle of both of them that middle is the mean or the average so you that way you are not taking either of the lateral side or the medial side you are taking the average of between two of them especially around the center line once you get that average between the two of them or the middle between the two of them you just draw a line to follow that that on the on the feather edge you don't need to find the average you could just take the longer of the two so that's what i'm doing here the average and then you take the longer of the two now that line you see me just draw is extra lines that are added to the feather edge just about one and a half inches which is called the lasting allowance then we cut at that average from that average point on the center line and cut it out once you have cut it you have what is called the mean form or the average form of this last then on the vamp line you divide the vamp line into two like we did when we were finding the coordinate you divide it into two once again so that's the lead point and then just cut slightly cut it slightly from underneath and from above so that you have you can rotate that um, pattern along the axis of that vamp line then you draw a straight line on a clean piece of paper and then place your center lines in such a way that they match that straight line that you just drew so you rotate that on that vamp line on you take that vamp line on these axis so that it matches that straight line and then you secure it with a masking tape so that it doesn't shift and move so we find that this pattern which appeared as a curve or as an angle is now appearing on a straight line on the main axis or the center line having done that the next thing that remains to be done is to cut out the different parts of this pattern so we start again from the capital using our rotary wheel we trace out the different design lines and then on the center line area so let's trace that out and on the center line area we score it so that it's easy to fold and fold it into two that way we generate both the lateral and the medial side of the pattern so we cut it out like so i typically like to cut notches around the feather edge to give myself a guide when i'm lasting so that i don't pull too much into the last and i don't also pull too little so that once i have the lines matched on my feather edge 
it gives me an indication that I'm on the right track. So this is your, the cap tool. So we'll keep that aside and do the vamp now. So we'll do the same thing that we did for the cap tool. We put it, we put it on a plain piece of cardboard that is big enough to contain the two sides of it. Trace out the design lines. Mark out, don't forget to mark out your feather edge. Then you draw the center line. And then mark out all of the design elements that you just transferred by the rotary wheel onto this plain piece of cardboard. Once you have done that, do exactly the same thing that we did before. We score it on the center line and fold it into two to generate both the medial and the lateral side of the pattern. So remember, on this vamp, we are going to be sewing the, the cap tool onto the vamp, so you add like about half a centimeter of sewing allowance to that front part of the vamp and then also add half a centimeter of sewing allowance to where the quarter will uh, connect to this vamp. So that's what you see me doing here. I mark out my notches for the feather edge. Then you do the same thing for the quarter. Trace out your design line. You trace out all of the design lines and then the opening of the shoe. You use a pen to mark out your center line. Draw out all of the design lines. For this particular shoe, I'm going to add folding allowance at the opening of the shoe so that I can fold it and not have a raw edge of leather. So you add all of those. So whether you're adding folding allowance or you're adding stitching or sewing allowance, you add all of those allowances to your design line and um, do it. The reason I'm not going to be folding this quarter is the quarter is basically the same thing for both the medial and the lateral side. So, and since they are two independent portions, I'll just cut one that I can flip over to get um, the other. So, we do the same thing that we did for the other one. We cut out the different parts. Cut out being also careful to add all of our folding and stitching allowances. So I have a folding allowance around the center of the shoe. I have a stitching allowance where the vamp will connect to the quarter. So that's what I'm cutting out right now. And also remember that I said that we have a folding allowance at the opening of the shoe, which is the notches that I'm cutting out right now. So having done all of this, the pattern is almost ready, ladies and gentlemen. We are almost on our way to celebration. So this is the stitching allowance for the vamp itself, where the, uh, the cap toe is going to connect to the vamp. So you connect the cap toe to the vamp like so. You connect the quarter to the vamp. The, the pattern is almost ready. The only thing remaining is to do the tongue. So we trace out the tongue just like we did before. Draw it around the center line. Trace out the guide design lines. And then mark out all of that, those lines. Then we fold it in the middle. We score the center of it so that it's easy to fold. Fold it in the middle and then cut out all the waist. So that's our tongue. Having gotten the tongue, all you need to do is just clean it up a little bit. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen, as easy as ABC. So you have your, you have your cap toe, you have your vamp. You have your quarter.